Hey, what is up, guys? It is your boy Ice coming at you from Boom Tactics. We have a new video today talking about the three new archetypes that have been heavily discussed. And we're actually going to be making a video today talking about our opinions, members of Boom Tactics, talking about our, our thoughts on the uh, new cards that came out in Secret Slayers. And here with me, I have Mash, who is new to or long time friend but new to the channel and then we have hustler who has also been doing videos with us say hi guys what's up guys hey what's up so if you haven't been keeping up with what's been going on there have been three archetypes that have come out in secret slayers and because of kind of everything going on with the world right now, we have been, it's been hard for some people to get their hands on it. So if you don't know, there are three new archetypes. One is a plant-based archetype called Rikas, or their original OCG names were Snowflowers. We have the Ad Emancipators, who were called Amantia originally. And then we have Eldlick, and I don't really remember what his OCG name was. But um, yes, so we have those three archetypes. Eldlicks are a zombie deck, and uh, Ad Emancipators are a rock deck, so we didn't really have much of that before. But um, to start off the video, we're going to be going into how we're going to start off with Rika and kind of how um, or what they do in general. So, um, yeah, so we're going to start off with that. So, Rika again are a plant type deck, and most of their cards really just kind of lock you into. Plants in general when they use their effects. Now, Mash, if you kind of want to kind of go into like a little bit more of how that works. All right. So Rikas have ability. Um, Rikas are a plant-based deck that is based around tributing plant monsters in order to special summon them onto the field. Uh, their larger monsters tend to lock you into. Uh, Plant monsters from your extra plants. deck. Specifically from your extra deck, not just plants from your deck. So you still can summon monsters that aren't plants from your actual deck or hand, but your extra deck is locked into plants. Uh, they have... Uh, level 1 monster that basically allows you to search any plant monster from your deck and well not any uh, Rika from your deck and it kind of is their main starter their main boss monster is a plant exceed rank 8 that allows you to tribute any monster on the field so they pretty much specialize on uh Removing cards from your opponent's side of the field without destroying them or specifically sending them away. Uh, yeah, they even have like a really cool combo with uh, one of their spell cards called Rika Flurries, which uh, if a Rika monster is tributed on the field, um, it your opponent has to pick a monster, monster on their, on their side, side of the field, field and tribute it. Yeah, attribute it. So that's one they have way a lot of cool stuff that pretty monsters. much like, yeah, and especially ones that cannot be targeted or can are unaffected, it gets completely around them because they're their own. You pretty much have to tribute your own monster, so it gets around stuff like that, and um, pretty much that's essentially what the deck is consistently doing is finding ways to tribute monsters, whether it's on your side of the field or on their side of the field, and. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much just a plant deck that consistently is always tributing stuff. And it's pretty fun. Um, it's an XZ deck. All of its bigger monsters are rank 8 and a rank 6. So, um, yeah, so the question is, is um, how does how does this Rika deck, which it's boss monster, it's two different effects, is that one, it can tribute, it can get rid of a material and tribute one monster on the field. Its other effect is that when a monster is tributed, it gains 200 attack, and it is a 2800 monster sitting with uh, 2800 attack and 2800 defense for the main uh, teardrop of the Re Queen, that is the boss. Um, so you essentially have her, and um, she pretty much gets herself 3000. So the question is, 
how can this deck stack up against other decks pretty much other decks in the meta and um we kind of have our own opinions on where we kind of place this deck kind of in a tier but we're going to get to that later um pretty much it's how do what do we think that where do we kind of think this deck stacks up against it like where what do you think hustler against the other stuff against the other stuff i'd have to say somewhere around maybe till tier 3 tier 2 pushing it because it 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 works great getting rid of all those pesky boss monsters or just monsters that are just going to give you a hard time your entire turn but besides that it really doesn't have too much more to offer like to setting up boards you will probably have your your um one rika exceed on the field and maybe one other um monster and that's basically the pinnacle of how good your field is probably going to be looking at you could run other traps like viruses to force your opponent to um miss out on turns to give you a chance to to set up a better board over time but besides that if you don't draw into those virus cards you're basically stuck with a very um niche field but yeah that's just my take on that yeah and um i know me and mash have been kind of experienced i've been experimenting with kind of a combo centric um plant or build for it but it kind of still has the problem is once you start using the rika side of the deck you start losing out on a lot of options in your extra deck and in your deck to summon anything else because it locks you into plants pretty quickly that kind of is the problem with the deck and kind of not the problem because there is good plant support but at the same time it it since it locks you in so quickly you have to always kind of be wondering, well, how do I continue? And you do get locked into, like, you end up just having teardrop on your field with maybe one other plant if you don't get what what you need in your hand right away. And that can be the problem with this deck, but I know, Mash, you were saying before we started this that this deck has the possibility of kind of being stronger. And, like, what do you kind of want to explain well... or kind of go into that? Where Killer uh, focuses on the combo potential of the deck, I focus on more of a control. Uh, I feel against these uh, like top tier meta decks that are extremely combo based. It can go. It would be a really strong first turn because uh, your main Exceed monster, for example, its effect is a quick play. So at a c crucial point in one of their combos or after they get one of their big monsters on the field that are not necessarily protected at the moment uh you can tribute it away it's not destroyed it doesn't have it takes away their protection um of their monsters not only that but you have a trap card that you can search for there where it uh either negates the effect of your opponent's monster that was special summoned or actually steals it for the rest of that turn so you have a lot of potential of disrupting your opponent during their turn uh though it loses a good deal of that if you're going uh second like it doesn't go uh, while it's good at disrupting your opponent, it's not so strong against getting disrupted itself. Um, so, say for uh, maybe uh, Salomon Greats, They're, they pull out a whole bunch of cards, lots of combos. Uh, you can pretty much pull the rug out from under them if you're going first. Um, but not so much second. Same with uh, Rocket Combo or Orcus. But um, it really depends if you're going first or second. Uh, as right. for viruses, I, uh, you'd have to make your plants or you'd have to change the monsters to dark. But it's definitely a way to get a little bit more control if you get them. But... Um, I don't see too many people taking the deck that route. Okay. And kind of for, uh, like, 
kind of find, to kind of like summarize or kind of get towards the end of the Rika is like pretty much can they do they have the possibility of being meta and they um it got confirmed in um later on in this year for Rise of the Duelist coming out later on they have a new support card it's a rank four Exceed monster it requires two low four monsters pretty much what it can do is um it's per turn you can detach one material from this card and target one plant monster or one Rika card in your graveyard and add it to your hand that's its first effect second effect is this card is tributed while it has an XYZ material you can special summon one rank five or higher plant XYZ monster from your extra deck or graveyard then you can attach this card to it as material so with that new card and with what the deck has to offer right now can this deck compete with the other meta decks and some of the other meta decks that we're going to be or that we are comparing this to that we at least know right now that will stay meta or are meta in this kind of weird time that we're going through right now in Yu-Gi-Oh is Rocket Link deck um Shadals um and Salomon Greats and then there's some other decks that we can splash in there like Heroes and Orcus but um Besides for that, can this deck right now compete against the best? Does it have, and also kind of including the new support, can it compete at a higher level against those? I think, uh, I think it's missing something. Maybe that uh, next link will uh, be the difference. Uh, from what I've seen it played, it almost feels like a weaker... Uh, like the Time Thief Luna Lights. And we know the Time Thief Luna Lights used to be in a Tier 2 deck. I feel like it's uh, a bit weaker than that right now. Um, like it's missing something. If it had something just a little bit more to push it, I think it definitely would be able to uh, be up there with them. Alright, and uh, what do you think, Hustler? I mostly think that um, it can compete to an extent with the meta decks with the surprise factor you know because most meta decks are just meant for e these exact scenarios and nothing else so when you bring in another deck that doesn't fit into those parameters it kind of throws them off but after that initial surprise and they more or less understand how the deck works or how the main problem cards work the deck starts to crumble underneath all those things so where would we want to kind of place this deck? Is it Rogue? Is it Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3? What? Where do we kind of want to place this deck as of right now, of the recording of this video? Where would you guys say this deck would kind of land? Uh, I, I'd say uh, as if where it is right now, not with future cards, just where it is right now, what we have in our hands right now. I'd say uh, probably High Rogue at best. What do you think? Yeah, I'd have to agree. Okay, so kind of a high rogue, maybe a low low tier three or kind of around there. Oh, and yeah, so. Um, yeah. But other than that, so it so this deck it, it's very fun though. I'm not saying just because it just because it's not you know higher up on our list or something. It's still a very fun deck to play, and it's really annoying sometimes to play against when your monster gets tributed right in front of you. And you have to be the one to the side to tribute it. So um, we're going to move on to the next uh, archetype that came out. This one is... I have fallen very quickly in love with this deck. Hustler also very much loves this deck. It is the <laughs> Adamancipators. They are the new rock support. Um, they have taken rock-type monsters to a completely different level. Um, so Hustler, They actually put rock-type monsters... On the, yeah, were, on the, like who have yeah. heard of rock monsters before this? Yeah. <laughs> so I exactly. learned a lot of cards so, that are rock monsters I didn't know they were before. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna kind of start off and explain and hustle. You can get into it a little to later. Access the lobby. So at Emancipators, they are a rock attribute type deck. Um, pretty much what they do is that you have when you your are in a party, level two hold to the view four to chat. Uh, tuners. And they excavate when they are summoned. They um, they excavate the top five cards of the deck, and they allow you to special summon any level four or lower non tuner um, as a rock from your deck, and then the rest go on the bottom. And that pretty much allows them to combo off very heavily. 
and make all sorts of crazy plays and um, pretty much kind of run rampant. This deck is very combo centric and uh, Hustle if you want to take it away with the rest. So basically how this deck works, at least how I've experienced it, um, if you like decks like Black Wings, uh, what's it called, uh, the Rocket Monsters, like just combo centric decks, this is basically Quasar, deck for Quasar so, something that's where you just want to bring out some big beefy monsters. This is basically for you. It's super easy with its um, level 4 and level 2 uh, monsters. And whatever a monster you want to add in under 4, or even some other big beefy rock monsters like uh, Gaia Plates, where it's just another uh, beat stick you get on the field, it's perfect for this deck. Um, the only thing yeah, that because I... This that I don't uh that oh, this sorry. deck doesn't no let's go. Uh the only thing about this deck is that um it's hard to get a bad hand, but it is really easy to target the monsters this deck really needs to shine. And that is the problem. That most of these monsters don't have protection. Yeah, because this deck is broken down to pretty much three different types of monsters. You have your at emancipators that the main tuners you have the rocks which are the crystals which are your non tuners and then you have the risen which are the synchros and each one of them once you kind of figure out what they do and get them onto the field there is no way to really protect them from not getting sent back to your hand destroyed upon summon or just completely negated in general because none of them have protection but what this deck does do though is pretty much if your opponent initially just gets rid of any one of those you can pretty much just get another one back onto the field just as quickly but this deck does have some kind of rng with it because every time you summon one of these um of the tuners you get a chance to excavate but if you get nothing off those excavations to kind of help continue your kind of your combo you're kind of dead in the water but the thing is, with certain builds and what I've been playing with, and I'm sure what Hustler's been playing with, because we kind of go two different directions with our deck, is that you almost consistently kind of get what you want through all your excavations. You're going to hit some sort of rock monster to summon off the tuner and be able to synchro summon into your level 6, which is only going to continue your combo, which there's three different... There's three different crystals and three. So each one, there's three different tuners, three different crystals, and three different uh, synchros, synchros, pretty much. And they all pretty much extend your combo. So the question is now is how does this deck stack against the meta with what's going on? And honestly, Shadals will completely shut. Shadals will completely shut down this deck if they go second against that deck because Winda will lock them out immediately and um yeah this is this is definitely a this deck is much stronger going second because most of their monster effects happen either on your turn or a quick effect during your opponent's turn and your main boss monster Dragite returns monsters to the hand depending on how many or um, cards in general rock monsters yeah cards in general he, however, he can excavate on your turn. However many rock monsters you show or excavated, he can send that many back on your opponent's field. And that only happens during your turn. And um, yeah. So, what do you guys think? How does this stack up against the other cards in the meta? Or can can this can this deck? Or yeah, sorry. How does this stack up against the meta? To you guys' opinion. My opinion, I think it would actually go quite well with the meta, because a lot of the meta nowadays is like setting up, like if you're going first, is setting up to uh, disrupt or negate your opponent's turn. And this deck is super persistent, like you can negate and it'll just keep on going. And uh, like you, you can negate, disrupt, it'll keep on going and going. Uh, if you manage to take out some of their boss monsters, uh, maybe it gets disrupted 
a bit more than trying to go uh, take out their lower stuff. But it's pretty persistent. Um, I noticed in both the versions that I've gone against so far, they've running, uh, they're running Nibiru. And I think if one's running Nibiru, which is another rock monster, um, which this deck shuffles its rock monsters a lot and you get them, uh, that it would actually have a better chance going against a Shed All deck, just because if you have a Nibiru in your hand, then Shed Alls will, like, Shed Alls have to summon so much in order to get their first field out that I feel like you'd be able to persevere against that. Yeah, that's true. Um, that said, I feel like the deck is a strict, like, I feel like the deck is strongest if it goes second. Um, a lot of its uh, boss monsters effects uh, really hurt your opponent when going second, and I feel like the boards, when you go first, just aren't quite as strong. Uh, like, they're easier to break than a lot of decks. So, uh, as for how I'd go against the meta, if it goes second, I feel like it would be really strong. Um, if it goes first, not so much. Yeah, because, I mean, this deck can kind of play... I feel like it can go first as in some situations. Because when you're playing against certain decks and they end off on, like, with an Appaloosa, if they're not... I mean, if they're not fully negating all your stuff, like, if they choose to go after your low-tier monsters, it doesn't fully hurt you as much. It's more or less if they choose to kind of go after your bigger tier monsters, and then that's when it kind of really slows you down. But, it, you're, like how you're saying, it's a stronger going second deck, but I feel like it can really play both, but it's better hit fields are going second. But, um, yeah, and then, I'll say, what do you think? I think I'm going to double down on what MASH said. Uh, it's It prefers to go second. It's boss monster. It prefers... Um, your opponent already having a field just to get its full advantage. True, it gets a negate if you have the right monster in the graveyard, but if you don't and you just had to spam him out by any means necessary and you're going first, you basically have a monster in the field that is not going to get any real use out of it because there's nothing to get rid of. And then it's basically just a 3k yeah. beat state that does basically nothing. But... It has the potential to do a lot of things. It's just the the its problem is that it felt it plays off what your opponent does. So if your opponent gives it the chance to get to that point, it will make them regret it. But if your opponent gives you no leeway whatsoever, it will crumble every time. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. And then yeah, this and deck is for... just so strong. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, uh, so basically how I see it is that if it goes up against any decks going second, it should be fine. But like you said, like Shadals, who where when Ducky just shut down your entire deck, it has nothing to respond to that. It just it just loses, and that's just how that is. And as for yeah, like, like decks like Solomon Greats, it can probably take it on without really much struggle, and Orcus as well. But yeah, just the Shadals itself is where it's biggest flaw is if you can't keep special summoning. Yeah, and then especially playing against something like uh, Rocket Link with a board of kind of like Abomination, Savage, and then um, yeah, I guess a Rocket, something on the field. You know, your deck doesn't destroy. It only tributes itself, so or not tributes itself. Um, it's constantly just special summoning. There's no kind of like destroying going on, so you don't get Abomination. Savage only gets one negate against it and that's not really enough at all against that deck. Um, so yeah, it, it's completely, this deck is completely insane, but um, Press a to going into the, the last part of this, um, can are they meta? And with the new, when they you are, are in a again, party, another support hold ca the view new button to card chat. for them was announced for Rise of the Duelist, and um, the card's called An Emancipator Friends, what it does is for the rest of the turn, after this card is resolved or resolves, you can special summon monsters except rock mon or you, spe you cannot special summon monsters except for rock monsters. Also, excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of rock monsters you control plus five 
and if you do you can add to your hand one excavated monster or one excavated rock monster whose level is equal to or lower than the number of number lower than the number of cards excavated excavated also place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order so with that card coming into the meta or coming into the eventually into this can this deck or is this deck meta can it stack up against these other decks all i see that that card really does is probably if you're running at one and at max one just so you can add a nibiru to your hand right before your turn ends just as a fail safe just as if they break your board if you go first which most likely might actually happen and it's like well fuck it well if i can't have my board you can't have yours and that's the trade-off but besides that it doesn't really seem like it changed too much that's fair so i guess this is can or what where do we think this deck kind of sits in tears and i think we accidentally skipped match <laughs> Oh, well, that's what you think. Sorry, the, the little cut right there messed up <laughs> the thing, but let's continue with MASH, and then we'll go into that. Uh, do I think the deck could be meta? As it is now, and maybe with the new support card? I haven't actually played the deck, so I'm not sure how the new uh, card will affect it, but I think it can be. Uh, with the new MR... Like, especially with the new MR5, it definitely is going to be a strong contender. Yeah, because, cause at least for me, because I love this deck, I'm a little bit biased. I think this <laughs> deck... Oh, I feel that. Yeah, um, yeah I, I honestly think this deck has so much um, potential to just be, like, a tier 1 deck. But as of right now, I think with, like, at least... Don't worry, I think we're all good players but there's obviously much better players out there um i think with those people kind of like we'll see when this comes to events i think this can be a tier one deck but right now i think it sits kind of just as a solid tier two definitely a solid tier two but it just has kind of a lot of weaknesses going for it as of right now but as out of every combo deck we have in the meta right now i think this is one of the top contenders to be the best combo deck but um, it definitely is a tier two, maybe at least in my opinion, one and a half. But what do you guys think? I think I agree with that. That it's a tier two, border bordering on tier one. It just needs a little more. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Probably just more um, some way to give their monsters more protection or some more viability during first turns or something. But yeah, definitely a tier yeah, two, like bare minimum. They would have thrown that into the field spell, because the field spell, they have a good field spell that kind of gets rid of some of the RNG, but if they would have thrown that into the field spell, I think that would have set this deck even kind of higher above as well, if that was in the field spell. It's something you can just use every turn in your, at your leisure, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Nash, what do you think? I think... I think saying that it's above a tier 2 at this point would be going too far. I'll say it's a solid tier 2 at best, but it will need a little bit of work before I give it more than that. Alright, so now to kind of go into what everyone in the community has been really talking about, and if you look at any kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh forums or anything, um, Eldlick, the new zombie deck or card in general, has kind of been on everyone's mind because this deck and that Elric alone, Elric, um, the Golden Lord, um, he is absolutely crazy card on his own. And not only that, but his deck or the, kind of his support also kind of works very much kind of like how Sky Strikers did with the, how many tech options they have alone in the deck. But, um, Everyone kind of right now isn't 100% sure where it sits, but kind of from where, at least from where we're sitting, we kind of have our own little opinions. But, uh, Mash, if you want to kind of take away with what kind of, what they do pretty much and what he kind of does. Well, the Eldritch card is a zombie card that, uh, you can send one, uh, Spiller Trap from your hand and him to your graveyard in order to send a card from the field 
to the graveyard. It doesn't matter. It's not a tribute. It's not destruction. You can just sna uh, you can uh, hit him. Also, uh, when he's in the graveyard, you can tribute a spell or trap card you have on the field. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's face up or face down, in order to add him back to your hand and special summon any zombie from your hand to the field with a thousand extra attack and they can't be destroyed by effects for a uh, full, until the end of your opponent's uh, next turn. So pretty much if you have like another one of him or him in your hand, you can just summon him and he's instantly at uh, 3500. Yeah, you can uh, and... do him or any other zombie. Say you have a Doom King in your hand that you really just want oh, to yeah. put on the field. But for now, just focusing on him himself. Uh, like, he's extremely... I think he's an extremely valuable tech option for decks that tend to run somewhat spell or trap heavy. Um... I've already seen a whole bunch of examples of him in Witchcrafter decks, which recycle their spells so you can use them. Uh, so it's not he's not necessarily just limited to zombie decks, he's just a really nice, I'm going to pop any card on the field at any time I really want to card just by himself. But when you run him in a zombie deck, then your possibilities, like... Pretty much the possibility to explode. So far, if there was, if I were to name a single card that was the best card that's come out so far this year, it would definitely be him. Um, when you're running him in a zombie deck, you have three different types of cards uh, that come with them. They're all spells and traps, but you have your golden land spells and traps, which are uh, trap monsters that come to the field. Now, Which are really trap... cool, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> They're really cool. I feel like it's important to point out, like uh, the Witchcrafter spells and traps, you have two effects that uh, each of these spells and traps do, and you can only activate one of these effects per turn. So if you activate one of the effects, you can activate the other one that turn. So... These monsters also have, uh, these traps, trap monsters also have a secondary effect that activates if your Eldritch is on the field. And what's important to know is like, it doesn't count as like a monster effect. It's you activate your trap, it special summons itself and has an another effect. So say your opponent, uh, one of them uh, destroys a card, one of them uh, banishes a card from the graveyard. And one of them changes your one of your opponent's monsters to zero attack, and you can chain any of those to like anything, and you'll get the effect off so long as they don't negate the trap. It's not like a monster effect that they can negate. Their secondary effect is when they're in the graveyard, you can banish them and summon uh, the uh, one of the cards from the second set of spells and traps that come with El Lich which are the Black Elixir cards. The Black Elixir cards also have the same thing as the Witchcrafter cards. They have two effects, and you can only activate one of the effects of the... You can only activate one of the effects per turn. The first yeah, effect... Isn't, uh, the, isn't there the White Elixir, the Black Elixir, and then I th which are both spell cards, and there's the Trap card. I don't... I think it's like the Red Elixir? I'm, I, um, I think it's the Red think, Elixir. Think, yeah. Oh, it's Scarlet, yeah. It's the Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine. That's what it is. That's right. It is. So yeah, there's three Elixir cards. And for these, all of them, well, both the Spell and the Trap, Special Summon a Zombie Monster from your hand or the deck. Though they Special Summon Eldritch from your hand or your deck, but if you have Eldritch already on the field, then it Special Summons any Zombie from your hand or the deck. And your last spell does the same thing, except it's from the hand or the graveyard, and it's a quick play. And that's White have... Elixir, correct? I think White Elixir is the one from the hand or grave. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And they also have the secondary effect, where you can banish them from your graveyard in order to get your Golden Land cards placed on the field. So those kind of recycle between themselves. 
Like, it's really neat because if you activate a uh, golden land, then you know you're going to get an elixir. If you activate an elixir, you know you're going to get a golden land unless they get negated. So with, I guess now, kind of like the knowledge of what Elric does, what the spells do, and kind of his support with his monsters, our traps, how do we think this kind of, how does this stack against the rest of the meta or go against the other meta now? Pretty much so with our Shadals, Heroes, um, Salmagrades, etc. How does this kind of uh, stack against that stuff? With or just either him as a tech choice or him as his whole with the rest of his zombie cards as a deck. How do we think this card is going to kind of impact all of that? Well, as a tech choice, I think it really depends on what deck he's put in. A lot of the high tier decks can't run them because they tend to be monster heavy right now. Like the current meta is super monster heavy and doesn't run that many. So it really depends on how you're planning on using them. As for if you run all of his, like if you run an actual deck with all his uh, stuff that comes with him, and of course it'd be a zombie deck, I'd say it would go really well against most of the meta. Like, not just the meta, but, like, all the new archetypes are coming out right now. Because zombie decks have their go-to card, Zombie World. And a lot of the decks kind of fall short when it comes to their field and graveyard being zombies. Yeah, Zombie World kind of shuts down a lot of decks. Especially a lot of the meta decks right now, like, easily. That could shut down a lot of things. And I kind of think that, like... With just le- like just him alone, he's he's useful in a lot of decks. But I kind of think that him, his zombie deck with everything else in it, is co- like honestly super freaking strong. And just the fact that like how much he can recycle himself, the ability to special summon any zombie from your deck, and they instantly have another thousand on them. And the way his deck just has so many different things that. Banish, special summon, and then just making your opponent's mind go to zero. Then with all his elixir cards, all his search cards that just get him on the field so consistently, this deck has a lot of potential just to kind of even go toe to toe with all those other meta decks that we have right now. And um, it's kind of crazy that I think out of all three of the archetypes that have come out in Secret Slayers, this one definitely has kind of most potent or definitely. Or has the is the strongest pretty much out of all three of the ones that we have so far. But um, what about you, hustler? Well, it, it seems like you guys basically got it all covered. Um, but the <laughs> <laughs> the actual card as a tech card can basically just run in essentially any deck, really. Like I've seen it used with Mayakashi's. I've seen it used with um the Ancient Warriors. Even in some cyber decks too, just because there are cards in those decks that just want to be thrown into the graveyard and this is just an easier way to get it done and getting an extra monster on the board as well. And I guess to end off or kind of end this part off as well is this deck meta, where does it land in our tier list? It is this deck. Or does this deck? Cause there's no new support that has been announced as out of um, as a recording video. But um, are they meta? Can they compete with the meta? And what do you guys think? Where do they sit? I honestly believe they can compete with the meta. Really, just with Zombie World alone, with him, will shut down the majority of the meta, regardless. But uh, he has quite a bit of support and really helpful spell and trap cards that just help him get around any problematic situations that may appear. But I'd say like tier two, maybe even one. Okay, what about you, Mash? I would, that was our uh... first confident one. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have to agree with Hustler. Um, 
it, it, with, even with, with Zombie World and how easily uh, all his support and him himself really support Zombie decks, I and the different variations Zombie decks we have out there, I definitely think it could be at least a tier 2, uh, maybe a tier 1. The only thing that's really holding it back is based on your opponent's ability to get rid of him himself. If they manage to banish, uh, banish Eldritch and you don't have another Eldritch in your deck, like if, they, if you're running two and they manage to banish both of them, uh, then all his support basically gets shut down, and that's definitely a weakness. So I'd say high two or uh, maybe tier one and a half. Oh, oh, that's right. His cards say that if he's not on the field, you have to summon him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. So if they if he gets so the and that's kind of how the deck the that deck yeah just shuts down. Right. That's kind of the whole thing of running two or running three because you run two one even if one gets banished it kind of ruins his like. It kind of ruins his own little thing he has when you eventually get both of them to your hand or in your graveyard because he can technically kind of recycle with his own self and kind of keep going back and forth. But it's like, yeah, you eventually kind of lose that with only running two, but then kind of running three, it kind of it goes both ways with however you want to build it. But I, I kind of just think this deck is, it reminds me a lot of like, Sky Strikers with how much like different things they kind of have and Sky Strikers are, are have were ridiculous forever. Um, I think this deck easily can sit at like one and a half and possibly just as possible just tier one deck already. But we have to kind of see with how it goes on in the future because there's a lot more cards coming out and because of everything going on right now, the, we got Eternity Code coming up. We have. Uh, Battle Legends just got confirmed for July, and who knows when we'll get our events again. And we have eventually the card that's going to destroy our entire meta <laughs> is Red Eyes Dragoon. So oh Red Eyes Dragoon is going to be coming out <laughs> later in August, oh, going into September. I'm gonna have to stop and um, Red Eyes Transfusions <laughs> or Red Eyes. Yeah, so Red Eyes Fusions are like forty dollars right now. I hope you know that. Um, so. We have a lot going on in the meta to come, but that's just kind of, I guess, to wrap up this video, that's pretty much our opinions of what we think of these three new archetypes. Honestly, all three archetypes are fun. I suggest you guys build some of them and play some of them online. Um, they're very fun decks. All of them have amazing looking arts and are just fun in general. But um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who watches and supports the video get videos we make. You guys are awesome. And... Um, yeah, if you guys can hit the like button, share, subscribe, we really appreciate it. And, you know, we're just kind of doing our best to continue to make videos with everything's oh. going on. Uh, we are no? half assing the best we can. Remember, mediocre content. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mediocre. Oh, yeah, you're right. Mediocre content. Um, there's, we, we're, yeah, we're doing our best to make mediocre content for you guys that you guys, for some reason, keep watching. Um, and yeah, uh, you guys want to say anything before we uh, end this video? Remember, guys, if you're not making them regret dueling you, then you're doing something wrong. The virus may not make zombies, but Elder Lich sure will bring the tort. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Thank you for watching. This has been all of your favorite people from Boom Tactics. Have a good one, guys. Adios. Son of the bitch! I fucking love you, Gio, bro. <laughs>